While Tropical Storm Halong passed north of us, the southern part of Guam also received some significant damage, such as here along Manangan Road in Jotnya. Del Garcia has lived along this very road for over five years and spent this morning cleaning debris with his son, Delvin. I mentioned to my son this morning, you know, I said, hey, get ready, get the machete in the shovel, got to clean the road up. A lot of debris and, you know, I understand the road, the conditions here. You know, it's hard right now with this, with this uh, rain and uh, it's very slippery for a dump, you know, a backhoe to come up here. The safety of their, it's hard, so I say, oh, I'll just come down and do what I can. He says when it rains hard, especially as it did Wednesday, it loosens the soil, causing landslides like here on Menengen Road to occur. Mayor Ken Joe Ada was on the scene yesterday and today to help address the problem. Due to the heavy rains, obviously you can see that it's kind of fallen down and uh, this is an access way here in Menengen that leads to a few houses on the backside. But uh, as you can see, you know, obviously the uh, it, the landslide happened. Along with the landslide, those along Manangan Road and several parts of Jonia were without power since Wednesday night. His goal was to help maintain accessibility and remove debris from the main highway and secondary roads. I'm just grateful and thankful to the Lord that, you know, that uh, this is something that we can actually recover from. From Jonia, we made our way to Inarahan, where traffic was backed up for a few hours along Denaga Road. According to Mayor Doris Flores Lujan, an ICC dump truck was stuck in a ditch since last week and the storm only made it more difficult to remove. Traffic eventually cleared by this afternoon. Thereafter, we went to Maritza, where flooding was the major issue. Mayor Ernest Chargiloff explains. Well, there are some homes that were flooded. And only because the, uh, the areas that were pro problematic and uh, recurring problems have not been addressed. Uh, and that is why we're, we're experiencing the flooding in the areas that are always problematic. Here along Route 4 in front of the Barcinas residence was one of the many roads deemed impassable due to heavy flooding. Chargilov says while it did not look like much of it today, he says at the time he and his staff were putting themselves at risk trying to clear debris from this area, which clogged this stream tunnel, causing the water to rise as high as six feet. When it rains hard and uh, the rain starts and, and continues endlessly up in the mountain area, all the water collects from the mountainous area and this stream down real fast, bringing a lot of the debris and it damps up on the culverts that are made for entrances for the Barcinas house. And not far from Maritzo, a six-member crew aboard the Take Maru 55 were forced to seek shelter at Coco's Island yesterday. Their vessel ran aground outside the Coco's Lagoon off Maleso. The crew is now on Guam after GFD's rescue boat retrieved the crew this morning. Keeping with down south, according to Port General Manager Joanne Brown, the Agate Marina, along with the Hagatnya Marina, did not receive any significant damage compared to previous storm damage. As you recall, Dock D was damaged last October, with Dock C recently condemned. Reporting for Guam's News Network down south, I'm Ken Quintaniza.